These are all of my favorite apps that I use on a regular basis, organized in different categories. And the first one is Beeper, and I knew this would be a big hit as soon as I heard about it. Beeper brings together all of your texts from every service you have, like WhatsApp, iMessage, Slack, and Twitter, all into one centralized location. There's an iOS app for it as well, so everything is synced across all of your devices. And best of all, it's free. There is, however, a waitlist for this app, but comment down below if you want an invite, and I'll give out as many as I can. All right, so sometimes I'm watching a video on the best Mac apps, and I think to myself, wait, all of this can be done with a single app, and that app is Alfred. Alfred is basically Spotlight on steroids. It does everything that Spotlight does 10 times faster, but it also comes with hundreds of other features. I can easily find anything on my Mac, and I can choose to either open the file or open the location. It also has full clipboard history built in, so I can just type clip and see everything I copied to my clipboard for an entire week. I can also search places like Amazon, YouTube, and Twitter straight from Alfred. It also has a built-in 1Password integration, so I can just type 1P and access anything inside 1Password. And I'm just scratching the surface here. I can add calendar events with date, time, and place all through Alfred. I can stop my Mac from sleeping, easily see time zones that matter to me, calculate just about anything, easily access emojis, and even get temporary emails. You can do all of this using workflows, and there are thousands of them that you can easily download without needing to know any coding. There are multiple apps, including paid ones, that people wouldn't need to get if only they had Alfred. Alright, so you know when you're copying and pasting something and the formatting gets all messed up? That's where Pure Paste comes in. It lives quietly in the background and automatically clears the formatting so you never have to worry about it again. And if you ever want to paste with formatting, just press the option key once before doing the usual copy and paste, and you'll paste it with the source formatting. It's great, it's free, everyone should have it. The next must have is a good grammar and spell checker, and my choice for that is language tool. I prefer this over Grammarly primarily because it supports over 30 languages. And although I type in English 90% of the time, I also speak Portuguese and I'm actively learning French, so this is a must for me. There's a paid version, but the free version has all I need. Another essential is a password manager. I personally use 1Password, I've used it for years, and it's rock solid. iCloud Keychain is getting better, but it's still not there yet. For starters, 1Password works on all platforms and stores so much more than just passwords. I have all my credit cards, passport, software licenses, and so much more in there. It also has an Alfred integration. I can press 1P on Alfred, followed by whatever I want to find, and just open it. I do this all the time if I want to see my passport ID or a license key, but I will say that Keychain has come a long way, and if you only use Apple products and want to store just passwords, it's a solid choice. Alright, so if you've used Windows before, you know that window management on macOS is seriously bad. Luckily, there are plenty of apps to solve this, my favorite of which is a free and open source one called Rectangle. It lets you customize keyboard shortcuts and shift windows to almost any position. You kind of forget it exists because it just works. It's honestly better than even the paid alternatives. Lastly on this category we have Flux, and if you don't know what it is, it's a way to reduce blue light on the screen as it gets later and later. This makes it easier for me to fall asleep as I work a lot at night. Ideally, you shouldn't even look at screens before bed, but if you have to, Flux is a must. Next, we have an app for other apps. It's called Setapp, and it's basically Netflix but for Mac apps. You pay a monthly fee and you get access to over 200 paid apps. This is not sponsored, I just wanted to point that out as some of the apps I'll mention are also found on Setup. If you're interested, I left a link in the description that gets you 30 days of free trial instead of 7. Alright, so let's now go over utilities. If you've used Notion, Obsidian, or VS Code, you know that those apps have a command palette, which is really useful and something that most apps don't have. And that's where Paletro comes in. Just press your assigned hotkey and you have your command palette ready to go. If you're curious, all that it's doing is putting all the actions you can get on the top bar into a command palette that you can search. This is especially useful in apps like Photoshop that have a ton of settings that you can easily access, or Chrome so that you can access all of your bookmarks and search history. Next up is Eno, which is my media player of choice. It can play pretty much any file. It's highly customizable and so nicely designed that it feels more native than Apple's own QuickTime. QuickTime has been getting better, but it still struggles to play a lot of things that Ina has no problem with. Okay, you know when you want to copy something that you see written on an image or a video, but you have to manually type it down? That's where TechSniper comes in. Just press your assigned hotkey, highlight the image where the text is, and it'll be copied to your clipboard so you can paste it whatever you want. Apple now has a feature that does this, but those pictures have to be on your device and not in the browser. So you have to screenshot the picture or the video and then do it. If this is something you do often, TechSniper is still a better choice. 
All right, so you know when you grab your AirPods and open them near your iPhone and you get that screen that pops up and tells you the battery of both the case and the AirPods themselves? AirBuddy lets you do that and connect them as well. It also displays the battery of anything connected to your Mac, even non-Mac products. And then there's Downey. If you want to download a video off of any website, there's a pretty good chance that Downey will work. You just copy and paste a link to it and tell it at which quality you want it to download and that's it. It's simple and it just works. Alright, so because I sit pretty much all day, I've tried a lot of apps that make me move and take a break. But to be honest, none of them work for me. I just end up postponing my break every single time, and it's just too much friction to always start and stop the timer. So I got the next best thing, which is Pendant. It's a silent app that sits in the menu bar and tells me how long I've been sitting at my desk for. This is the only thing that kind of works for me as I'll glance there every now and then and realize that I should probably get up and take a break. Alright, so if you use an external display, you know the pain of having to reach in the back of the monitor just to adjust the brightness of your screen. Well, with monitor control, you can adjust the brightness of any of your external displays, even if you have more than a couple. Unless, of course, you have an Apple display, in which case, you're a well-off man, what can I say? And I'm very deep into the Hue ecosystem of lights, but the problem with those is that you have to get out your phone every time you want to change anything about your lights. And to fix that, I got this app called Hue Menu, which lets me change pretty much anything about my Hue lights straight from my menu bar. I've had this for a long time, but since then, some free alternatives have come up. But since I've already paid for this, I never bothered trying any of them. Now let's move on to productivity. And next up, we have the most powerful text expander tool out there. It's called Espenso. It's a free and open source app that detects when you type a specific word and replaces it with something else. And this could be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. I use it for simple stuff like to easily type my email addresses, my monthly newsletter, or my socials, but also for some expressions and repetitive tasks like replying to emails. It even works with variables like today's date. Espenso's configuration is local, so you have full access to it, which involves a little technical know-how, but the documentation is extremely easy to follow, and the 5 or 10 minutes you spend setting it up will save you hours in the long run. And at the heart of any productivity system is a good task manager. I've tried a bunch, but the one I always keep coming back to is Todoist. It's just rock solid. The natural language processing is excellent, and the free version has more features than many of the paid Todoist apps. I've made two videos on Todoist, which I'll link to them in the description below, so I'm not going to spend any time on this. And equally important as a task manager is a calendar, and my choice here is Fantastical. It's a subscription, and I hate it. But it's the only calendar that has all I want, so I reluctantly pay the cost. The best feature is by far the natural language processing, so I can just say dinner tomorrow at 8pm or tennis every Friday at 4pm. It also works with Alfred, I can just type cal followed by what it is I want to add and it's there. It also has some nice cool features like the ability to blur out past events on the calendar and to see the weather forecast. I don't even use half of what Fantastical can do, but it's still worth it for me personally. Next we have my browser of choice, which is by far Arc. Arc was invite only for a long time, but it's now available to everyone. I went over all of my favorite features about Arc in this video right here, so I'm not going to go into that on this one. Next we have Drop Zone, which is the most powerful menu bar app that I know of. At its core, it acts as a zone where you can easily move files around or just hold them in place until you're ready to act on them. But what makes this app special is this part here called Actions. Let's go through the few that I use. Starting with email, I can drop my files here and it's going to create a new email with those files attached to it. I can also airdrop anything by just dragging it here. And then there's Imager. If I drag and drop an image here, it uploads it to Imager and copies the link to it to my clipboard so that I can paste it anywhere. I use this all the time when I'm replying to someone on Reddit or other websites where you can't attach pictures. There's also install application, which is really cool. You know when you install an app and you have to mount the DMG file, drag it to applications, eject, and delete the DMG file? Well, if you drag and drop the DMG file here, it'll do all of that for you instantly. And there's a whole list of actions you can get. This is a great app that just like Alfred, feels like a hundred apps in one. This next one is a little hard to justify nowadays, which is Cleanshot X. It's a screen capture tool that has everything you could ever want. You can annotate, blur, create backgrounds, and even record videos, which I'm using right now to record this video. It's definitely the best in its class, but if I wasn't already a setup subscriber, I would never use it. It costs $29 to get a license for a single Mac, and you stop getting new features after a year, and you then have to pay another $19 to renew it. Yeah, no way I'd use this. I would use Shutter instead, which is almost as good, and it's free. 
All right, remember how I said that some built-in Mac apps like iCloud Keychain and Spotlight aren't yet as good as the third-party ones? Well, one app that I believe that's no longer the case for is the Email Stock app, which has gotten so much better in recent years. It's reliable, it works really well with apps like Alfred and Dropzone, which is how I begin most of my emails, and it works really well across all of Apple devices. Personally, I don't care about the best design or AI features. I just want something that's reliable and easy to use. I also have a bunch of emails from different providers, and a lot of them are in ProtonMail, which doesn't easily integrate with other email clients. I can't speak for Superhuman as it's way too expensive to even consider it. And this brings me to personal knowledge management, and I'm going to skip right through this as it's just two apps that do everything for me. Obsidian, which I have a whole playlist on, and Readwise, which I did two videos on, one for regular Readwise and another for Readwise Reader, and they will both be in the description. And before we go over to maintenance, I want to have a quick word from our sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a hands-on learning platform and it's the best way to master key concepts in math, data science and computer science interactively. Just set your goals and Brilliant will customize the content to fit your needs so that you can learn through it at your own pace. Analyzing data is something that has never been in higher demand, and Brilliant's latest course, Predicting with Probability, will teach you everything you need to get started in data analysis, and you'll learn fundamental concepts that are key to some of the most in-demand careers. And this is just one of the many courses that Brilliant adds every single month. There's always something new to learn. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash from Sergio, and the first 200 people that sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. This next category is maintenance, and when you have a bunch of apps that aren't from the App Store, updating them becomes a pain. And there's this free little tool called Latest, which centralizes all the updates of all the apps on your Mac, whether you got them in the App Store or not. You can then see what the updates are and update them with a single click. But sometimes you don't want to update an app, you just want to get rid of it. But if you just drag and drop an app into the trash can, there's a good chance it won't get rid of everything related to that app, which is where App Cleaner comes in. You just drag and drop an app into it and it's going to find every little file connected to that app and delete it. And to make things even simpler, you can head to the app cleaner settings and toggle on smart delete. Now you can do exactly what you did before and drag and drop an app into the trash and app cleaner will still detect it and ask you if you want to delete every file related to it. Highly recommend it. Now if you're like me, you probably want to see the CPU and RAM percentage that your computer is using which is where iStats comes in. It's simple, it stays in your menu bar and tells you all that you need to know about your system. It even tells you about network activity, temperatures and more. I use this primarily to see if there's any app taking up more CPU or memory than it should. All right, so by now we have a bunch of stuff in our menu bar and to organize it, I use Bartender. Bartender lets you customize just about everything on your menu bar. It also has a bunch of other features which I don't really use, and honestly, if you only care about organizing the apps and maybe add a space or two between them, you should just get Hidden Bar, which is free. Alright, so there's a couple of apps that my creative work heavily depends on as well. And the first one here is a new find for me, it's called Eagle, and it's something I've been waiting for for far too long. In short, it's a way to collect and organize digital assets like images and videos. Kind of like Pinterest, but on a whole other level. For starters, everything lives locally, which has huge advantages. It saves everything at the best resolution, it's blazingly fast as you're not dependent on an internet connection, and you're in full control of your assets. You also have tags, descriptions, even color analysis and stars, so you can easily find what you're looking for at a fraction of the time. And anytime you want to use any of your assets, you can just drag and drop them out of Eagle. I use this for loads of things, to collect inspiration for my thumbnails, to organize all of my b-roll, music and sound effects that I use in my videos, and just overall design inspiration. I even changed a bunch of my background here using inspiration that I found from other creators that I collected using Eagle. If you want to make it available in the cloud, you can also use any solution you want like Google Drive, Dropbox or your NAS. Highly recommend this app. Then we have Photoshop, which I think everyone knows, so I'm just gonna skip it. I will say though that I gave Affinity Photo a try, and it's getting better every year, but Photoshop has a much larger user base, which makes it so much easier to find answers to your problems and tutorials. And speaking of Photoshop, I can't not mention my favorite Photoshop companion, which is Sip. Sip is a color picker that lets you see the hex code of any color, which doesn't sound like anything special, but what sets it apart is that it keeps a history of all your colors and organizes them, so you can have quick access to different palettes. I have a palette for my studio renovation, my living room space, and I want to have one for my thumbnails as well as I'm trying to keep them more consistent. 
And speaking of thumbnails, it also has a cool contrast checker. So when I'm making a thumbnail that has text, I want to only include colors that offer a high contrast. And I can check that here. And I can't not mention Final Cut Pro because I've tried a bunch of editing software and Final Cut is the one I always come back to. DaVinci Resolve is definitely better when it comes to color grading, but really my videos don't require much of that anyway. And ever since Apple released their Mac Silicon chips, Final Cut has gotten significantly better. If you have even a base model Mac with an Apple chip inside, you're gonna get incredible performance on Final Cut Pro, which cannot be said with similar priced Windows machines using something like Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. All right, so this last category is a short and fun one, which is travel, and there's three apps here. If you ever hotspot on your Mac, you know the pain of having an app quietly in the background drain your entire data plan. And as always, there's an app for it. This one is called Trip Mode, which lives in your menu bar and tells you how much data each app in your system is consuming. I don't often travel to places where I need the hotspot, but on the few occasions that I do, I'm so glad I have this. Next one is Tripsy, and although this app is great, I would never in a million years consider buying it if I didn't already pay for setup. It's a travel planner that lets you collaborate, so my partner and I both have it and we can both plan our trips and see everything in one place. It also pulls all sorts of reservations via email and it's an all around good app that it's absolutely not worth the price tag. And then there's Flighty, and I only found out about this one during Apple's WWDC early this year when Craig was showing the Flighty widgets on the iPad. I remember seeing it on the couch and thinking, whoa, that looks cool. It's a beautifully designed app that lets you keep track of flights. It syncs with your calendar and lets you be on top of delays, baggage claim belts, and a bunch of other stuff if you pay for the premium version. I don't do it because I don't travel nowhere near enough to make it worth it. I also use it to keep track of the flights my friends and family take to make sure they arrived safely or if I'm picking them up from the airport to be alerted if there are any delays. If there's any great app that I missed that you think I should know, please let me know in the comments. And that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.